Welcome back everybody, thanks to be with us today. This is the third and the last session for Eurogoose Mexico. So two weeks ago we were presenting to you our cooling solution. Uh, last week we were presenting to you our itching solution and today we will try to introduce to you our preventive maintenance uh, solution. So first let's introduce ourselves. So I'm Michael Petisme, sales manager of the group and today I will be here with Alex. Alex, how are you? Fine, and you? Fine, thanks. So, I'm Alexandre Vorez, sales engineer for Lefigal Company, and now we'll uh, start our presentation about our solution for preventive maintenance. And just to start, a reminder of our two main business activities. So, eating solution here, uh, with, of course, the immersion heater and all our applications, so furnace and so on, and jet cooling application with spot cool device, jet cooler, coping, and uh, even our water snuff softener. So just to start, a short reminder with the um, immersion heating solution by Michael. Yeah, thanks, Alex. So last week we saw the main mechanism for heat exchange. Uh, we assume that when you use one immersion heater, the main mechanism is conduction. So yeah, the conduction is very important. Uh, this is how we provide 99% of the electrical power supply uh, in one immersion heater uh, using the, uh, the property of the aluminum itself. So if we describe uh, pretty much the, the compound, this is able due to the ceramic sheath. And uh, we can see now the range of products we can find in Lechigel, Alex. Yeah, absolutely. So to start our must have and star project, this is the E-type immersion heater, especially for furnace and ladder application. As Michael say, high efficiency, high conductive power, and we can up to 40 uh, kilowatts. Afterwards, we'll have the L-type immersion heater for the shallow level. So a very effective solution. And then the air power, uh, air power heater, so just over there on the left side, uh, to preheat gently and smoothly uh, some ladle to avoid any overheating and damaging on the refractory. So the L type on the screen, the preheat. Just to, to show you, and this is very important to master, uh, to use effectively those solutions, you need to master some parameters and especially the installation process and Michael will explain, will explain it to you. Yeah, thanks, Alex. So as we explained uh, last week, uh, it's important to preheat uh, such kind of heater. Uh, the best way will be to use uh, one oven to preheat maybe at 80 or 100 degrees our emission heaters. If you don't have such kind of device, you can just take the heater, put it on the cover of your furnace and wait for 15 or 20 minutes, for instance, uh, will be enough and uh, more than nothing. Uh, most important thing with our heaters, uh, as we assume that we are working with conduction, uh, please always use our heater switch on inside your aluminum bath. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you remove the heater uh, switch on in the air, the air is not a great conductor, so you will uh, provoke any damage inside the, the heater and uh, we will try to avoid it. Uh, another important stuff for our heater is the maintenance. We, we, we assume that we need to clean it. And uh, now Alex will show you how to clean easily uh, one heater from the chigel. Yeah. So as Michael said, the, the cleaning is integral part of our preventive maintenance process, especially on immersion heating solution, because it will guarantee any, how can I say, a complete removal of the dross and avoid any overheating point on the shelf. So easy, this is, how can I say, easy to do. Uh, just this cleaning tool with the immersion heater, you can do it on the 32 diameters, millimeter diameter solution and the 55 millimeters diameter solution. So basically you need to move from the top to the bottom on each side. So thanks to the tool, you are able to do it in front and at the back. So thanks to that, really you will optimize the performance and improve the lifespan of our solution. So just to show you and thanks to these components, you will be able also to improve so the lifespan and we have developed a device, the Wattmobile, which also um, a good stuff for this type of uh, phases and maintenance and process. So just let's move on the Wattmobile. Yeah, um, maybe we can explain why we develop such kind of device. Uh, the Wattmobile is a tanky solution. So that means we build um, electrical cabinets, easy to move, uh, to give you the po possibility to connect one immersion heater whenever you want, whatever you want uh, for your application. So that means uh, you, you will be able to put one heater inside the furnace for maintenance, for instance, uh, inside the ladle uh, for during transport, or for instance, during disgassing. So that means it's an easy way for you 
to keep your aluminum at a good temperature or to avoid any drop of the temperature set point. And this is why we developed this turnkey solution compatible with the immersion heaters. The Watt Mobile is, is very easy to use. It's very, yes, very easy to use and it's a turnkey solution. So now we will go inside the Watt Mobile to explain everything, all the features, all the parameters you can uh, set up yourself. And now Alex will headline to you all the features of the Watt Mobile. So now just moving on the, on the solution, uh, basically, you can just find the electrical and the regulation cabinet over there, the frame, and then some of the supports. A very important factor, and that's why it's a very versatile solution. You can just add one or two immersion heaters with one bath thermocouple, and this is very important. We are talking about versatile solution. So this solution, it's a mobile device, so you will be able, thanks to the wheel, you will be able to avoid any over design or modification on your process to use immersion heater. And this is very important. So you will not have any over cost uh, by implementing this solution. This is pretty affordable, by the way. And thanks to that, you will have a power up to 40 kilowatts. So very, very powerful and efficient. And just for you and information to show you how easy it, uh, the use is, just move on the other slide of the presentation. So. Here on the de designing, you will have only one commutator there with the, with the switch it on here, just to switch on the solution. Afterwards, you will be able to define the set point. So in this case, we have one set point for the metal temperature defined by the bath thermocouple at the back. So you will be able to manage it by yourself. So 700 degrees, 720. And then here, the emitter temperature. So this is the internal temperature inside the immersion heater and you will be able to define the set point by yourself. So pretty easy. And thanks to the regulation system inside, you will be able to have a steady and smooth eating rise range inside the solution. Just to show you how, how effective it is, we'll be focused on a study case and Michael will show it to you. Yeah, uh, of course, we do believe that the, the best way to show you how in, is important this turnkey solution for you or how it could be useful is to give you an example. Uh, this is a study case you can find here in the screen of one of our customers using a 1.5 uh, ton furnace. He was uh, making the maintenance of the cover. Uh, this cover was Rajan cover, and uh, they assume that when they are performing this maintenance, they are losing a lot of temperature. And sometimes they, they took more than four hours to recover the normal situation to continue to cast. So if you lose time, you will lose money. Uh, the idea with Lechigel was to propose the Watt Mobile, and, uh, and we did, and we, we, we made it uh, as well, uh, we put one heater in the dipping area, uh, allowing that the temperature uh, keep the same uh, level of um, set point. And like this, the customer was able to continue to cast uh, after 40 minutes. Uh, so the, co the comparison is the following one. Before, they was losing uh, three hours because they were, they were performing the maintenance and losing a lot of temperature by radiation. And now using the Watt Mobile, they're just losing 40 minutes because using one liter, they are able to, to keep the temperature at the same level, just a little bit, uh, yeah, a drop of temperature. But after that, they can recover the normal situation and continue to cast. So this is one of application of the Watt Mobile. Uh, very, very interesting for you if you're using radiation cover uh, furnace. Or one other kind of application could be to preheat a ladle, for instance. Uh, now, maybe you are using some burners, some flame, damaging the refractory. Maybe you, are, you can think about switch to one watt mobile, easy to use with one thermal power heater. And now Alex will headline to you uh, some example we, uh, we have made. Yeah, so just to move on uh, the preheating system with the air power heater. Basically, this is the same process our immersion heater. The thing is that instead of damaging and um, the refractory will preheat softly and smoothly. Uh, the refractory, of course, we have both. We have several options. The standard one, this is the 10 kilowatt option, and you will be able to heat up the the refractory of the of the ladle by three or four hundred degrees within f six to ten hours. Of and if you want to speed up, of course, you can have another configuration with two uh, air power heaters of 10 kilowatt each, and you will be able nearly to double, um, to divide by two the preheating time. This is very important because when you know the refractory retrofitting, retrofitting cost, and when you know the maintenance cost, it could be a huge advantage uh, for you as third key solution. 
So on the, on the heating side, this is pretty much uh, enough. Now let's move on the cooling side. Yeah, Michael. let's switch to the cooling solution uh, maintenance, pr uh, preventive maintenance we can propose to you. Uh, but maybe first of all, Alex, can you remind to us uh, the jet cooling cycle and the jet cooling technology? Yeah. So basically, as you can see on the screen, and this is very important. So jet cooling, this is just a way to pinpoint and cool down precise scorpion inside a mold. So you will just by wa air, water injection and air injection be able to cool down a precise area. Thanks to the device, thanks to the corpins, jet coolant and all the piping around. So we, l we need to have all the water softener and the closed loop system. This closed loop system is the guarantee of the performance of the device. We have three main steps in the process. So the first one, this is the water injection time, which means this is the solidification time of your die parts. Very important to master. Afterwards, we'll have the um, purging time or the drain, which will remove all the water inside your process to have a clean solution and the leakage time. Uh, the leakage test, so this leakage test or core, uh, core uh, breakage test, which allow you to check if you have any failure, or any leakage in the process. So very important to use to guarantee the performance and the viability of the solution. Another topic to master, this is the preventive maintenance and some action to do on the spot cool and Michael will explain it to you. Yeah, um, we assume that uh, we have a lot of customers using such kind of device, could be the classic one, the evolution one. Uh, I would like to align today three main points to do for, man for preventive maintenance. Very easy and very easy to understand. The first one will be the filter. Uh, as we assume that we are working a closed loop uh, system, uh, you have to, to be careful about the quality of the water. So this is why uh, this filter is here to help you to filter some particles could happen when you have a, a new dye, for example. So this filter should be clean any, uh, every shift. If you cannot do it, just maybe take another filter and just remove the old one, put another one, and you can continue to, to produce. This is our advice. Uh, the second point and very important point will be to clean the tank. So here you are able to dismount everything and clean uh, inside the, the tank to remove everything, uh, all the particles, all the dust. You can have a catch inside the closed loop. It's very important to, to ensure uh, great cooling process. The third one uh, will be uh, inside the device. As you know, we are using a high pressure pump. So the high pressure pump, here uh, you need to control the level of oil. Very easy to check because here you can have the red point uh, giving you the level of oil you should keep on the, on the device. So please uh, check it at least uh, one by week to be sure that you have enough oil inside the system. Uh, talking again, please do not put uh, too much oil, otherwise you will damage the pump. So please just respect the red point. So just a, uh, a small sum up, three point filter, tank, and the oil of the device. Uh, well, this is pretty much for the jet cooling device itself, but uh, you can ask a question, what about uh, the process? What about inside the core pin? So we spent time to develop in the past two years a new system, which is a flow master system, uh, giving you the possibility to control uh, what happened inside the core pin. So here uh, we propose to you to control the flow inside the core pin. Why? Uh, when you control the flow inside the core pin, you'll be able to compare your process. Uh, you'll be able to detect some leaks or some clug. This is very important because finally, if you are not in the correct uh, way to perform the jet cooling, you will produce some, sp some, uh, some, 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 scrap. some scrap. And uh, this is not good for you. So that's mean uh, using the Flowmaster system, uh, you will be able to avoid this phenomena. So now Alex will line to you how to connect everything and have a big focus on the spot box. So just to be focused on the spot box, and as Michael said, it's pretty easy and affordable uh, solution. So actually you will have maybe the, the head of the solution, the spot box. Afterwards, you will have the spot cloak with all the flow meter and all the piping. So if you start and consider the gel cooling process as previously expla explained, this is very important. You will have the manifold, the connection just heading to the jet cooling system with jet cooler and uh, the core pin. And afterward, on the way back only, we, you will have the spot flow with flow meter inside and the spot box. 
Actually, this is very important to, to, for you to, to master. We have actually eight circuits, so eight spot flow circuits, which allow you uh, a maximum of 64 um, jet cooler at the same time for the monitoring. Just to move on deeply and closer on the explanation, there, there is the interface. So this interface, you have several uh, connection types. So at the bottom, you will have the spot flow connection, so the eight connection type, which starts from there and join the spot flow here. On the right side of the device, you will have the Profinet connection to allow you uh, the connection directly on the die casting machine and set up the alarm and the monitoring. And then the dry contact, so the electrical supply, the USB key uh, and the socket, just to allow you from uh, some extraction, but Michael will, will explain, you really explain these parameters after. And that's all, on just only on the external side of the device. Yes, so thanks, Alex. So as we explained before, um, you can um, control the process using such kind of device. The way we are doing it is very simple. Um, we assume that your process is correct when you start a production, and we will record uh, kilometer zero, So, which means we assume that it's a nominal value. And we will see how far we are from this value on time. So here on the screen, you can see that you can control uh, the alarms for each position. So that means you can set up uh, your level of alarm for each position, or you can switch uh, on the other, uh, yeah, on other screenshot. You can just save all the uh, featuring for all the die, for example. You know this project is a uh, Carter, or it could be a uh, Motoblox. You can save everything and just upload from the, from the spot box. If we have a look on how we handle the level of alarm, we give you the possibility to set up two levels, two levels of alarms, and I will explain to you why. The first one, if we take the example, we can assume that the nominal value, for example, in these copings could be 2.3 liters per minute. Uh, we can assume that we can work with 80% of this value uh, reaching um, 1.8 liters per minute, and we can assume that it's okay to continue to cast and to produce good parts. So that means the cooling is not so efficient as before, but it's uh, efficient enough to make a good part and not a scrap. The second level of alarm could be, for example, in this, in this case, 50%. In the case that you assume that if you reach such kind of value in your, regarding the, the flow inside your core pin, could be for clug or could be for, for leaks, the final part will be not good. So that means there is no meaning to continue to, to produce. So that means we will stop the die casting machine or just inform you to say, to say the level of, uh, um, of the flow inside the core pin. There is no meaning to continue to produce. If we go forward on the, on the PowerPoint, we, we can see a general overview of um, all the value. So here you are able to see the real flow inside your core pin and to compare to the nominal value that you recorded before. And now Alex will show you how the system uh, friendly and uh, by economy, ergonomics will uh, interact with you during your process. So the most important thing is that we, we try to develop a solution uh, with an easy use. And actually, this is what you can see on the screen. And as Michael explained, we have three types of alarm. So the green one, so everything is running well and perfectly, no issues on it. Then you have the orange level. So this is the first milestone of your alarm uh, parameters and then the red level. So, and the red level could stop or might stop your process depending on the parameters you choose. And this is very important. This is the, the thing you will see there on the screen and there on the device over there with the lights just here. Afterwards, uh, we'll have another type of display and screen. This is this type of screen. So during the uh, continuous way of working and running process, the alarm will just show uh, on the screen a different way. So if you have the red parameters, as you can see, you will have many data on the screen. This is very important. And the most important factor is the trust factor and the percentage of accuracy, which means how reliable is the monitoring and the measurement. So thanks to these parameters, you will be able to check, okay, will I have a, a clog or is there any issue on the system and the process or the piping? And this is very important. And as Michael said, this is very important because if you're producing scrap, this is a lot of money, lot of money and a lot of money, unfortunately. So you need to master it in order to improve your process and just avoid any um, extra cost in the process. Afterwards, we'll have another type of display. This is a kind of overview of the process with all the spot for connecting. And as you can see, and perfectly explained by Michael, you can pinpoint 
on each sp flow master in spot flow uh, the type and the circuit you want. So it could be only one circuit one for one spot flow or the eight circuits on the spot flow. So let's move on. And afterwards, the, maybe the final display and one of the most interesting one, this is the real time monitoring thanks to the curves. So you will have a steady curve for the critical components and the critical level, which means this is the 50% you defined previously. And afterwards you will have the two curves. So the green one, and you will be able to check if you're in compliant with your process and if there are any gap or a flow, flow, flow drop during your, your producing, producing step. Of course, you can measure it in real time, but this is very important for you to use this data, and Michael will explain you how to do it. Yeah, thanks, Alex. So we know that you are controlling all your process. Uh, you control everything on your parts that you are casting. But sometimes, as we explained before, you will make RNG and try to understand what happened in one, uh, one part, um, why it's not good, why you have some scrap. And uh, as I explained before, sometimes it could be just a clog or some leaks regarding core pins and uh, you will lose time and uh, this is not good for you. So we give you the possibility to take all the value from the spot box. Uh, it could be by uh, Profinet sending everything to the die casting machine. It could be by USB key taking all the parameters of the flow inside each core pin. And you can study it to finally understand what happened and sometimes uh, maintenance is a key point, so maybe maintenance was not done and you have some trouble in the copings and this is a reason and your process is finally still okay, but you should make some preventive maintenance. So this is really the purpose of such kind of device is to giving you the possibility to control more your process and to be able to conclude on what happened inside uh, the coping, which is very important. And finally, by measuring the flow, uh, we're able to do that. Uh, well, I think uh, this is pretty much all for such kind of solution. Uh, maybe we can uh, finish and switch to the last one uh, with this cartridge. Um, as you know, the quality of the water is very important uh, for the jet cooling cycle, for the jet cooling process. And uh, from logical side, we assume that you have to work between zero and 20 microsiemens uh, regarding conductivity to ensure the great jet cooling uh, performance. So, um, as you know, we are selling products all around the world and the water quality is not the same. So that means the input is quite different for us. So using this, uh, this filter uh, cartridge, we are able to work uh, everywhere. So that means this uh, cartridge will ensure to you to work in a good range of uh, conductivity and it's very important for us. Uh, we put it upstream our devices and like this we are sure that you are handling uh, the process in a good way. Uh, moreover, we use this connectivity meter uh, to give you the opportunity to check the water quality during your process. So you will have green, orange and red light saying to you the green light is okay, the orange you should change something and the red light you have to stop because you will damage everything and most of all uh, the jet cooling process will be not good for you. So this small cartridge uh, can give you a lot of liberty uh, just guess your water quality is not the best in your, in your foundry or you don't want to invest in an osmosis system using this cartridge you will be able to provide the good quality water uh, to the jet cooling system and this is very important. Um, now maybe Alex you can sum up to us all the benefits of the preventive maintenance and why it's so important to, to make this preventive maintenance. Yeah because the preventive maintenance is a very important factor because if you just invest resources in such a, in such process, you will be able to anticipate, uh, maybe and improve the lifespan of the components of the machine, improve the performance. This is very important. And by the way, you will avoid any stop, any scrap, any loss of money. And this is very important because preventive means you win money or you do not lose money. And by this, so thanks to White Mobile, thanks to all the system we show we showed you, this is very important because thanks to that, um, afterwards you will master your process, improve it too. So you will have a better understanding of what happened on your, uh, on your process, how to improve the quality, how to improve your productivity and so on, even by the analysis of the, the parameters. So let's conclude by this way. It's better to invest in preventive maintenance than curative maintenance. Yeah, great conclusion. Thanks, Alex. So thanks for your time. Uh, feel free to check our website. Uh, if you have any question, feel free to ask to sales at logical.com and we remain at your disposal for any kind of uh, request. Thank you very much. See you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye.